So this time, as you've seen on the beginning, we have a Audi S5. Uh, this is the first, first S5 that was actually made. It comes with a 4.2 engine. So we've been contacted by our customer, Charlie, and uh, he was telling us he had this kind of a car and he is after the timing chain replacement job. So um, he didn't mention really too much over the email. So the car was delivered in that kind of condition what you've seen on the beginning. So we usually don't have cars uh, like that delivered. Uh, they pretty much clean. But before I'm actually gonna put a hate comment on the owner, um, short story, the car was traveling on the recovery truck from the garage to garage. Uh, nobody was really able to fix the issue by replacing crankshaft sensors and camshaft sensors and all sort of other stuff. So uh, the car came to us originally with the typical coloration fault on the timing chains. After we checked it with the VCDS, uh, we find out that uh, the bank to camshaft adjuster is actually not moving on the exhaust side. So um, this 4.2 engine actually have not two, but four camshaft adjusters. So we have two on the inlet and two on the exhaust. And uh, also we have uh, four solenoids which are controlling them. So we find that one of the solenoids were actually faulty. It didn't come um, with any fault on the exact solenoid, but after we replace it, the car is actually running good. There's no multiple misfire and uh, all the numbers start moving again. So from that point, the car was pretty much fixed the first day since it was dropped. But uh, we check it on the ramp, we point some other issues uh, what the car actually suffers with. So Charlie decides uh, to go ahead and do the timing chain jobs anyways because you want to make sure the car is actually all good. Also from underneath, well, I'll show you in a minute, there are a few oil leaks, what you can see. Uh, also these S5s and A5s have a typical problem with the rear subframe, um, it's rotten. So we will take the rear subframe off, uh, we will try to sort of refurb um, the old subframe, see how it goes, hopefully it's not rotten too much where I can't see it. And of course we're going to remove the engine, uh, we will replace some gaskets again, we will do carbon cleaning on the valves, we will do the timing chains and everything will be necessary and needs to be done. And hopefully from what you've seen and what we've got here, we will make the car look again how it actually should look like. So we have loads of loads of loads of work to do and uh, if you're interested how we actually make the car again looks like as it should be, stay tuned and uh, we will start with the job now. So here we go, I on my own this time removing the engine, I think it was Sunday. So uh, just a short footage how the engine is coming out as usual, timing chains at the back of it. So there's nothing we can do while the engine is in. There's our beautiful engine and as you can tell from the oil leaks and the rust on the balls and the clamps, the car was sitting for a while and is not in the best condition. So usually uh, one person, it will take you like one day to remove the engine from the vehicle into the point when everything's dropped on the trolley. The second day usually uh, on my own, or as you can see me and Miroslav at the moment, uh, stripping everything that needs to come off. So separate the gearbox from the engine, remove the loom, disconnect everything, take the manifold off, remove the subframe and actually then you can get to everything that needs to be done or replaced. So this time I didn't edit the footage what you will see now which is just speed up by 7000%. That was total 6 hours of footage. So enjoy. So once we remove the manifold, you can see Miroslav is laughing. He will understand why he's laughing in a second. So there's only one word what will describe the footage and that is shocking. I've never ever seen while we're doing these cars so much carbon in the intake or on the intake valves.
this is day number three. Everything is ready to be installed. There's our beautiful timing chains. There's actually nothing wrong with it. It's just a precaution changing it. So we didn't find anything wrong with it. Internals of the engine looks clean. So I personally think um, the oil change was done regularly. And uh, this is our problem right in the middle in the V. I find there's loads of oil leaks coming from the top. So I think I have to remove the whole fuel supply to the rails. And I want to replace the gasket underneath that housing. So that will be the next thing what needs doing. Of course, the intake valve would need doing. Uh, that will be later on. So you can see how the oil is leaking from the top to the bottom. This is our water pump. Uh, that's absolutely filled with oil and also it was leaking from the top from the rock covers but meanwhile the engine is out i definitely want to take the water pump out that there are two gaskets behind it also replace the crank seal and as a last thing once everything's done i have to clean the whole engine up so this is all the stuff from tps what we will need for the timing chain replacement we have all four oil tensioners two for the cylinder heads with the gaskets the middle one for the oil pump and the uh, mine one for the middle chain with two brackets, four bolts and four chains. So by looking at the engine, it's very similar with the old V8 BBK unleashed the middle part. And uh, as soon as you're gonna have a look at the cylinder heads on the left and right, it's more like a three liter TFSI engine. So it is a bit of a mix with the old and new engines. And also, as I mentioned on the beginning, you can see now you have a variable timing on the exhaust and the inlet side as well. So finally, we can remove all the timing chains, tensioners and brackets. We are using this cup tool to hold the camshaft adjusters in place. So we're not putting too much pressure on the timing tools because they are quite weak, especially on the camshafts. If you're planning to do this kind of a job, you need the tools for this particular engine because 3 litre is different and the old 4.2 BBK is different. Okay, so once everything is cleaned up, we are ready for installation, the new timing chains and the guides and the tensioners. We have to start with the middle chain and the cylinder head chains along with the gears, otherwise you're not able to slide them out. So as soon as you're gonna put all the tensioners back together, I really recommend to tie the bolts according to the Newton meter spec before you're gonna put the camshaft adjusters because they are covering, I think, three bolts on the tensioner so you won't be able to tie them afterwards. Otherwise, it's just easy installation. We're not tightening the camshaft, adjust the bolts before all the tensioners are released and everything is in place. As a last thing, we're gonna tie them to the Newton meter spec and we will do three or four turns and try to reinstall the timing tools back on to check if the timing is done correctly. I was born to be free. Right, so this is how we're getting on so far. Everything is in place. We turned the engine a few times, so basically the timing is in place. It's not out. You have sort of limit, uh, plus minus three degrees, but closer to nil the timing is, the engine will run better. I will also put you a picture of the Newton meter spec for all the bolts what we used to do this engine. So here's the picture of the Newton meter spec what we use. It's very important to tie the camshaft, adjust the bolts to the Newton meter spec, otherwise, uh, the timing might skid and uh, you will damage your engine. So next up, I clean up these timing chain covers and also we are putting new crankshaft seal as always. It's good to put the plate, the timing chain plate back onto the engine without the crank seal, you have a bit of more movement. Also, you can see these covers on the 4.2. These tubes are for the coolant supply for the cylinder head because you definitely don't want to have any coolant in the oil so small bits might do quite big damage because as soon as you ain't gonna replace them and you have a coolant leak in the oil the engine might seize that very quickly these are the ports to the cylinder head and as I mentioned as soon as I try to remove these old o-ring seals they just split the, the rubber is not holding the shape so as soon as we will not replace them, I can guarantee you, you will have coolant leaks into the internals of the engine. Okay, so enough talking, let's get back to work. I still got plenty parts what needs to be fitted on this engine in the box. So let's put these covers back on and we will continue with the rest of it. I was born to be free. Timing chain covers are back in place and next up on the table we have these rocker cover gaskets what needs to be fitted on these dirty rockers. So before the fitment I definitely have to clean them from all the oil and grease and then they are ready to go back on. Back on the engine I can finally move into 
the middle of the V, what I was mentioning earlier. I'm suspecting there's an oil leak. So we have to remove this housing which is covering the oil solenoids and we will replace the gasket. To, to get to the housing, I have to put these few lines aside. Once it's all off, I'm gonna clean up the middle of the engine, reinstall the oil filter housing along with the new oil filter. Once all done, I can finally move to the front of the engine. I removed the crankshaft pulley to get to the crank seal and we have to take off the water pump as well finally to clean it and replace the two opening seals which is behind it along with the one gasket for the coolant. At this point I didn't know I'd done a mistake but we will, we will get to that later on. Everything is cleaned up, put the two o-ring seals behind the water pump, the one gasket uh, for the coolant onto the block. I'm using a very special technique to remove the crankshaft seal, the two screws along with pliers to pop it up. Once I put a bit of oil onto the new crank seal it's uh, ready to go on. We are finally getting into the stage of cleaning the dirty intake valves. You can see the amount of carbon which is built in the valves is just absolutely enormous. The engine done around 140,000 miles if I'm correct. It did took me probably one whole day just to get rid of all the carbon from the intake valves in the cylinder head. Meanwhile the intake manifold was off. I thought I'm gonna have a look at it. Uh, what's the stage of the flaps and the intake manifold himself? And again, as soon as I opened the intake manifold, I was a bit of a in shock because you can see all the carbon build up in the intake manifold along with the flaps. So this is definitely not a good sign and especially I think it needs to be done. So basically we strip the whole manifold apart, remove the flaps and we will begin cleaning the, the whole intake manifold. The reason why I want to do it, you have alley seal inside the combustion chamber and the carbon is very hard stuff as soon as it will get into the combustion chamber while the engine is running it might cause some scratches and uh, it might lead to engine failure afterwards so cleaning these intake flaps uh, it is very time consuming i'm using a very small brush uh, to clean them it is a soft brush so i'm not damaging the plastic or the materials which are inside so you can see the difference between the ones which were done and not done also this is the side of the inlet manifold which i still have to do just to compare this is the other side what is already done so as soon as everything's cleaned up there's no gasket between the upper and lower side of the intake manifold i'm just using the deco silicon for the upper and lower part as soon as the silicon is applied everywhere it needs to be we will put them back together of course to split the intake manifold i had to remove the throttle body so again i will replace all the gaskets which are between the intake manifold and the throttle body so we have these two gaskets on the cylinder head which will go between the cylinder head and the intake manifold so it's ready to go back on the car actually you've seen the footage how it looks like previously so again we put all new gaskets clean it up meanwhile the pcv was off i did have a look of the stage of it and again i'm not sure if i actually want to put it back on just look at all the stuff inside of it so i know it's more money but i don't replace it now while the engine is out and it's just actually replace the part then have a future issues and be charging the custom extra labor to be removing it when the engine is in. So here's the beautiful V8 clean up and ready to go inside the car. Uh, Miroslav is helping me putting the engine back in. Ideal, there's always two of us when putting the engine back in the car. There's quite loads of things, pipes, loom, whatever sticking out where you might damage while you're lowering the car to the engine. So it is a couple of minutes actually to put the engine in. Once it's in the ideal height, we're just gonna put the screws for the subframe and the whole car will lift with the subframe and the engine. So as I mentioned on the beginning of this video, this car suffers with the rear subframe, so we can move on to the rear of the car. You can see once the subframe is removed, um, the chassis is in really bad stage. There's quite loads of rust on the left and right. So definitely I'm not putting the subframe onto this sort of stage of the chassis. So I'll try to sort it out. Speaking of the subframe, let's have a look at the stage of it. You can see around the welds and edges, the paint's peeling off, it's not in the best condition. 
I will drop all the bits uh, along with the slave bars and plates and X plate to the company which will sort it out for us so they will uh, sandblast it down and powder coat it. When I was reinstalling the arms I had to use a few new offset washes along with some nuts and basically before I'm putting the refurb subframe back onto the car I did sort out the chassis the best way possible. I did took most of the rust off with the wire brush drill and I put some metal build paint on it and then we just put some uh, adhesive on it so it's protected from the rust so that should sort out the issue meanwhile and always not the best job guys but unfortunately we always have some limit with the budget most of the budget went onto the engine because you've seen the stage of it and basically we sort out the rest what we could how we sort it out Right guys, so we did manage to start the engine up, it sounds quite healthy, everything was fine until we have a fault code coming up and it says thermostat from up engine cooling F265 open circuit. So I did google a bit and I did find we have a problem with the thermostat or basically with the sensor which is on the thermostat. So we will end up with a new thermostat as I mentioned earlier. I did that in a mistake, which I didn't know about. We shouldn't change it, but it's too late. We decided to do it on the car because I thought it's quite easy accessible, but uh, never say it's easy because as you can see from five bolts, one of them is actually under angle. So we couldn't put any socket on there. The bolts were rusty as well. So we were quite stuck. It actually took us a couple of hours. We have to apply our special tools to remove these kind of bolts and um, luckily on the end of the day we didn't damage the water pump anyway so uh, the thermostat was successfully replaced afterwards the fault call went away we were finally able to bleed the cooling system from the footage of the old thermostat you can tell there was a mechanical failure basically the metal body break from the plastic housing and that caused that the thermostat I think didn't open so we didn't have absolutely any cooling in the radiator but it is all sorted and we can move on okay guys so I did want to finish the video a different way but unfortunately I deleted the footage so we will finish it uh, with a quick recap of the actually net on the car and I will tell you the total cost of the repair what we've done so the car was here for i would say four months from the beginning when it was dropped on the recovery uh, we actually sort out the issue with the incorrect coloration problem uh, the whole issue uh, was causing the solenoid so uh, this is the electric oil solenoid which is controlling the variable timing like i said there are four camshaft adjusters and uh, we have a fault core on bank two sensor to incorrect coloration with the multiple misfire so uh, we changed the solenoid the problem literally went uh, the multiple misfire stopped everything was fine so uh, we contact charlie he was quite happy with it but anyways we want to continue with the job so meanwhile we had a sort of improvement from him uh, with the quotation what needs to be done what we seen on the ramp uh, it took a bit of a time then of course uh, the engine job was quite quickly done i would say but unfortunately when we outsourcing stuff we can't do anything when it's taking longer especially with this s5 with the rear subframe uh, and all the bits what needs to be powder coated took a bit longer than i was expected but nevertheless the car's done charlie took it um, the car still needs bits and bobs doing uh, basically the front suspension will need doing soon and some small bits and bobs but literally past the mot the car's drivable everything's fine engine wise is absolutely brilliant uh, also before we gave him the car We've done two oil changes with the flush as well, the BG product we'll be using because it was standing for such a long time. So we want to make sure there's nothing in the sun, the engine internally is clean and you've got fresh oil. So um, here's all the stuff what was actually replaced. So um, yeah, small bits and bobs, cool and reservoir. So you see in the footage, it was disgusting green. There was some stuff flowing into it. So uh, we decided to replace it because um, it did look very bad and second of all i didn't want a fresh uh, mix fresh coolant with all the stuff 
with the frogs and whatever was living in there. So the coolant tank was replaced. Uh, PCV, yeah, reason why it's full of dirt, carbon, whatever. And uh, precaution, I didn't want to leave it there in that stage because it's absolute nightmare to replace it on the car. Also, the pipes which are coming to it are plastic, they are very fragile. Even the ones we took out were already broken here and there and there were some cracks, so we actually repair it. And uh, yeah, I don't want to replace this on the car if I don't have to. Uh, yeah, Rocco cover gaskets. Um, the rubber is basically, see they're breaking, they're failing apart. So the rubber is quite old. They were leaking like hell. You've seen the oil leaks everywhere from left and right. Um, then we are coming to timing chains. So uh, one cylinder head tensioner. This is the uh, main tensioner for the chain, second cylinder head tensioner, and a tensioner for the balance shaft. Next up, the two gaskets, which is underneath the intake manifold and between the cylinder heads. Uh, then we have uh, the gasket, which was uh, in between the cylinder heads. Uh, that was replaced because there was quite lots of oil coming from the middle to the bottom. Then we have a uh, front and rear crankshaft seal. Biggest problem, D bushes. We were able to get the front ones. The rear ones was a bit of a problem to get because Aldi is only uh, selling it. Uh, with the swave bar actually, so you can't get them separate, but we were able to get them online. So front and rear bushes, uh, front and rear bushes were replaced. Uh, also, two new exhaust clamps because they were so rusty, I just literally couldn't loosen the nuts, so we have to cut them. Uh, from the rear suspension, this level sensor is basically seized up and is not operating properly. So the level sensor on the rear suspension was replaced. Busted thermostat. I didn't know about the fault before we actually took the engine out after we put some coolant in and we have a problem to bleed the system. Uh, we have the fault cover you've seen. So we end up with a new thermostat. Unfortunately, we have to do it on the car, which took us almost all day, but that's the live mechanic. So that was replaced. Service bits like spa plugs, yeah, all eight of them. So all eight spark plugs were replaced because um, they didn't look the best. Also, we put new coal packs. Uh, Charlie did mention he put some new coal packs in there, but we still sort of have a misfire. So we go, we went for eight new coal packs and uh, the misfire was gone afterwards. So don't know what kind of coal packs they were. And uh, yeah, just more gaskets and more gaskets and more gaskets and many many more gaskets so um, this is what we actually done oh yeah and i almost forgot we also replaced the starter motor we also replaced the cluster called the cluster correct the mileage on the cluster and uh, from the rear suspension we did put some new offset washers with bolts and nuts but that's about it to the s5 i would call it like a small engine overhaul we didn't done the internals but everything around the engine, uh, what, what was accessible as uh, gaskets and stuff was replaced. Um, the car was literally standing for over a year, so there was no MOT, so the car went for MOT, it passed the MOT with no issues, so it was all good. Um, the total bill of the S5 was just over 6,000 pounds labor material, so um, yeah, that's the sort of money we are looking at to do this kind of a job with all the extra bits here and there. Um, also, as you can see, one car went, another car went on the ramp straight away, so we're quite busy with these jobs. Probably you're asking, like any other customer who's coming here and saw our YouTube videos when he walked through the doors, why are these two cars on the ramp still? I'm really hoping there will be a video out very soon why are these C5, S and RS6 stuck on the rump? But uh, we'll get to that later. So yeah, um, this is the end of the video, guys. So uh, I want to thank you for watching and uh, I'm really hoping we will see in the next more interesting video, hopefully, with something else than just an S5, three liters and whatever, whatever, whatever. So yeah, take care for now and I'll see you in the next one.